I'll tell you, nothing beats going into space. It's hard to describe it in words. You know, you're floating around and the fact that you can put your face up against the window and stretch out your arms and you look down and I'm flying over this beautiful planet that we have. You feel like an angel. You can see the clouds. You can see the continents. You can actually see cities at night because the the lights, you can see the coastline and where people are. I think it's really a magical experience. When I became uh, the first woman to pilot the shuttle and be the commander, I just felt like, you know, what an honor. I never really had a role model in the space program who was a woman commander, but there are role models everywhere. Our mothers, our teachers, and I can even think back to the women who were uh, who flew in World War II. People like us, even at my age, I think I'll have a chance to go back in space someday as a tourist. I personally can't afford it right now, but <laughs> I'm waiting for the cost to come down. And I'll go maybe someday when I'm in my 70s or 80s, I'll go back up there and have that experience again. But it's definitely worth it. Colonel Collins, it's been more than 50 years since the Apollo program first landed Americans on the moon. And I, I took a quick look at the at NASA's website and, and they proudly say that our success will change the world. Is that how you see the Artemis mission as something that has potentially world-changing implications for all of us down here? Yes, without a doubt. I believe that our Artemis program, our mission to the moon, will change life on Earth. And you can see how the space program in general has changed life on Earth. I mean, it's massively changed life on Earth. Everything from communication satellites to navigation to the fact that we have a space station doing research on a human body, uh, doing new technologies, new medicines. I mean, just being in low Earth orbit is changing life on Earth. We could not really predict that back in the 1960s when there was a lot of, you know, I was just a little kid, but I remember all the pros and cons of why are we wasting money in space? But also Mars is the final yeah. destination for, well, not final, but the next destination for us as a human species. We want to go to planet Mars, which is six months away. And the technologies that we develop on the moon will be used on Mars. We need to learn how to manage those risks while we're only three days away on the moon. Because when we go to Mars six months away, we're not going to be able to just call for a replacement part or call a repairman. We're going to have to know how to prevent bad things from happening. And if they do happen, we're going to have to know how to fix them while we're six months away on planet Mars. So I think the answer to the to your question is, the ultimate destination is Mars, planet Mars, and we will test the hardware and the software and the technologies to keep us alive on the uh, surface of the moon before we make that journey to Mars. Yeah, there's no quick kind of Amazon Prime immediate one day delivery up on Mars. It, it, has, to, it has to be done. Someday beforehand. there will be. Someday we will have that, but we're not there yet. Do you have a time frame for the world you're describing, I suppose the planet, the, the universe you're describing, where humans are truly interplanetary? Well, I can say the timeline for the Artemis mission is uh, in about a year from now, we're going to, you know, circle. Uh, four astronauts are going to uh, fly to the moon. They're not going to land. They're going to circle. Then they hope to land on the moon in 2027, maybe 28. Again, with the purpose of using that lander on Mars. Now, a lot of people are saying we're going to land on Mars 2030. I wouldn't put any money on that. I, I would like to see it happen. Uh, but it is very difficult to keep astronauts alive that far away. Now, as far as having people living and working, that is, you know, I want to say that would be like a creative thought that you have to put some thinking into it. I think we'll be living and working on the moon much sooner. 2030, 2035, we should have research stations wow. where people are rotating in and out. And we also have workers go there to build. We will call it, they will be astronauts, but they will have job titles that are more specific than just astronaut. They will be building these research stations on the moon and maybe just go there to build it and then come home and cycle out like construction workers. When are we going to be living and working on Mars? I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen in the next 10 years. But I would say in the next 20 years, I could see research stations on the surface of Mars. I, I believe that can happen. Why Mars? Why, why the 
um, why the, it, it feels like it's a kind of this recent fascination with Mars and this test for us as a human species. So make the case for Mars, Colonel. Yeah, so we often hear, why do we go to Mars? And you could think all the way back to the explorers of the 15th century. Why cross the ocean? Why would we do that? And a lot of leaders said, no, I'm not going to fund that trip. That's crazy. But some countries did fund it. And, you know, here we are with North and South America that we had, you know, humans had no idea what was there with the technology that they had back in those days. Now, obviously, we have better technology today. And it is similar that it is a very, very long journey time-wise and risk-wise to get to Mars. But we never really know 100, 200, 300 years from now what we're going to find there. You'll also hear the argument that we here on planet Earth are at risk to certain devastating events that certainly haven't happened in the history of humankind. Things like getting hit by an asteroid or a pandemic wiping out all of life on Earth or, you know, maybe something, you know, I say that something would happen on the sun. I don't want to scare people, but something would happen on the sun where it could uh, knock out a lot of our electrical power here on earth. I could go on and on, but these are extremely rare events. But some people will say that we need humankind to become a multi-planetary species where we can continue humans living in our solar system on a different planet, not just planet earth. Do you believe now, that? Do you believe that yourself? Is that something you feel that that is something we have so to be this, ready this for? So this is an interesting question. I don't think in my lifetime that we're going to have an asteroid hit the Earth or that there will be a pandemic that wipes out all life on Earth. I I really don't see that happening in my lifetime, but I think it could happen in the long run. You know, it probably will happen in the long run. So I'm glad to see that uh, there are countries and companies and smart engineers that are thinking about how do we get people off of planet earth living on another planet where the people there can sustain themselves without uh having resupply coming from earth it's been expected that artemis will put the first woman the first person of color on the moon even though earlier nasa quietly removed that from their website i looked at the canadian website it is still up there on the canadian website and they'll be part of this mission um I was speaking to the travel writer, Rick Steves, recently, who who talked to me about watching the Apollo moon landings and how much it meant to him uh, to watch that as a child. How much would it mean to people who haven't done it before, to women, to people of color, if they see themselves represented in a moon landing? Well, I think it's very important that we have diversity of human beings in our space program. For many reasons. Uh, first of all, as you mentioned, individual people can, in a way, see themselves, not that it is themselves or just somebody who maybe looks like them or has a background like them. But I think what makes a difference is when you see they go, well, I could do that someday. And it gives that person a, I want to say, a better connection to what's going on. Um, I don't think that should be the primary reason because I think you know diversity should not be the primary reason that we uh, pick people. And I don't think that is the primary reason. We pick the people who are the best qualified. And of course, mm. there are many people who are very, very qualified. But I think it's important to have the diversity in the crew because people see things differently. And I can speak from the point of view of a woman. I think I see things differently than men do. Uh, I'm a mother. My call sign back in the Air Force and at NASA was mom. Everybody called me mom because I was always seeing things from a safety perspective. The people that NASA has as the NASA astronauts, any of them can do the mission. So you can bring in diversity as a selection, I want to say variable or a uh, something that you can look at as you do a selection process to make sure that you have men and women and people of different heritages on the crew. And I I think that's fine, except I don't think you should start with diversity as your right. first selection process. So I hope I say it's, it's a difficult thing to talk about. I got to be careful of the words that you use because somebody might misunderstand what I'm saying. But hopefully, um, hopefully I explain that properly. And I think, no. uh, go ahead. 
I agree with you that it, it is a weirdly difficult thing to talk about um, and to kind of make it clear that nobody is compromising on qualifications or ability or quality when we talk about this. But it's a question of opening the door to different experiences. Of course, when you went up, uh, when you you were had a number of firsts, first pilot, first commander, and you didn't have those other people to look to as role models. You had to find it in yourself to do it. I'm I'm wondering if that made you more or less afraid. I mean, does does it do something to the fear factor when somebody like you hasn't when you are the first? Um, I think I think that's a great question, and I I do think that it's possible. You know, when you're the first person doing something, it's possible to like be very concerned or worried or scared or whatever. I am actually not that kind of person. I went into my, well, I'll give you an example. I was in the first class of women to go through pilot training at my base back in 1978. It was a long time ago. It was part of a test program to see if women could successfully fly military aircraft. I was so honored and thankful that I was in that role because I, it made me try harder. And I think it also helped me be a better communicator because I really think that sometimes people would approach me like, I wonder what she's like. You know, I've never worked with a woman commander before. You know, is she going to bite my head off? Is she going to be like my fifth grade teacher that was really mean to me? And so I know people, the men that I worked with were wondering about that. So I made it a point to myself to be open with people, to communicate with them, to tell them, hey, you can talk to me about anything. Um, I didn't actually say I'm not going to bite your head off, but I, I tried to set that impression that I want to be a humble person with an open mind. I want to uh, help people to think creatively and to be willing to talk to me about things that maybe they wouldn't be willing to talk to about otherwise. And I tell the young women, you know, you work hard, you know, maybe you have to work a little bit harder than the guys, but take that, you know, I was thankful for that because I was a better pilot. I was a better commander because I felt like I had to work harder at it. And I'm, I'm actually, I look back and I'm really thankful that I had the opportunity to do it. And I'm thankful that I didn't break anything <laughs> because if I did, that would not have been, I, I, it, I'm afraid if, if a woman breaks something or does something wrong, I think it gets more news than if a guy does it, but that's just me. That may not be true, but, um, so I worked, I worked much harder to make sure that I was, is that I didn't make mistakes. Colonel Collins, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thanks for all the questions.